the king of Israel. Now, a lot of people misconstrued this when they shouted, Hosanna, king of Israel, they were actually greeting somebody that, 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 that they really believed was going to be their savior, or, or a political savior, in a sense. Not a messiah, but a political savior. Jesus didn't come to be in politics. Jesus didn't come to be a dictator. Right. He came to save the world from sin. Right. And he did it humbly. He didn't do it in great uh, power. He showed signs and wonders. And that's why the Bible says that Lazarus was even around. And remember, there was a multitude of people that were there when Lazarus came out of the tomb. So all these people had, the Bible says that they spread the word to other people. And they said, this is the man that did the miracle and brought Lazarus out of the tomb. Now Lazarus was alive during this time. Do you have to understand this? Because he had been raised. Now Lazarus died again, but when Jesus raised him, he still lived. And he lived through this time. So you can imagine going to a grave after somebody's been in there four days and taking the tomb and opening it and then saying, come out, Lazarus, come out, and the man coming out. Now Jesus himself had the power to give life because he's God. He was able to take his own life back and raise from the grave. So that when we die, we don't have to be afraid of going to the grave. Because we know that we will be raised up as Jesus was raised up. Amen? Amen. So we don't have to be afraid of that. But today I want to talk to you a little bit about the events that happened. In the four Gospels, the four, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they talk about the triumphant entry of Jesus Christ. You know. But theologians call this the messianic entry. This is when Jesus came into Jerusalem and everybody was wild. You can just imagine the crowds, you know. They were throwing palm branches and they were greeting him as the king of Israel. And the very next week, they abandoned him and they crucified him. Can you imagine that? How many times we get excited about Jesus, you know, for... For a season and we're all so excited and we're pumped up and then, you know, pretty soon we become cold and, and, and forget about them. And just put them in the back burner. And we want to do everything that we want to do first and we forget about Him totally, completely. This is what these people did. But Jesus had a purpose. He went to the cross so that we can be saved from sin. So that we no longer have to fear death. Because one day when we are in that grave, He will call us by name. He will say, Melissa, rise. Bindalan, rise. Kelly, rise. Billy, rise. Fran, rise. And we will come up. We will awaken and we will be with Him forever. Amen. This body, like I told you when I was preaching about the rapture, this body is not going to stay in the ground. It's going to be raised and glorified and we're going to be in the air with Him. Now, it's important that we see the entrance of Jesus before He was crucified because we have to understand what it did for many people. Now, there was a jubilant acceptance in verse 12 and 13, a prophetic fulfillment in 14 and 16. A sign of acknowledgement in 17 and 19 and a biased rejection. All of a sudden, people were rejecting Christ. Were saying, no, crucify Him. We don't need Him. Large crowds had welcomed Him. And now large crowds were saying, crucify Him. Why do you think that was? It had to be. It was written, Jesus came and laid His life down. Nobody took it from Him. So, the ancient world, uh, the people of Israel, when they would greet kings, like, uh, like Saul, I don't know if you remember in the Bible, it talks about when Saul was coming from war, and with David, and they said that Saul 
kill his thousands. But then they said about David, he kills his ten thousands. And then Saul got jealous because he was the king. So the, the people of Israel greeted kings. And, and it was a normal fashion for them to greet kings this way. And so they would come in and, and, and they would greet them. They would uh, greet the conquering heroes uh, returning to the city. So they were greeting Jesus saying, Osana, Osana, make way for the king of Israel. And in the Hebrew, Osana actually means save me or save now. Save me or save now. That's what they actually they were saying. Save me, save now. That's what Hosanna means. So when you say this, the word Hosanna, it's a Hebrew word. It means save me or save now. That's what it means. And it's important that we see because remember the passion of Jesus Christ. There's a movie that wasn't made not too long ago. And it, it, and it shows and it depicts Jesus Christ on the cross. And it, it depicts the passion from uh, from the way that he went, uh, you know, on the road, and the way he carried the cross, and the way they tortured him and whipped him, uh, and the way they crucified him, and, and the cruelty of how it was done, and the way that the Roman soldiers would take their fists and, and beat it against his face, you know, he was a bloody Paul. Uh, I know that there's a lot of pictures on, on, you know, in places that you go and it shows Jesus Christ with a crown of thorns and a little, a little blood dripping down. That's not how it was. It was, it was torture. He was disfigured. But when he went into that tomb, the Bible says that on the third day, he rose again. And he lives at the right hand of the Father today. He's not crucified. He's not in the grave. He's in heaven. And so he has the power to be able to save us from that day. So when he says, fear not, daughter of Zion, he's actually talking to the people of God. He's actually talking to us. Fear not. Fear not means don't be afraid. Do not be afraid of what comes your way. Death has no sting. In other words, death cannot hurt us. Death is merely a passing from this life to a better place for us. Now, make no mistake about it. Those people that never accept Christ in this earth are not going to heaven. They're going to go to hell. They're going to go to a place of torment. A place where they will constantly be in agony and torment. The Bible distinguishes as the ganishing of teeth and the lake of fire. But we that are saved, it says that we will be in heaven. And that we will walk in streets of gold. And that we will be able to drink from the fountain of life. And we will see everybody that we loved, that had preceded us in death, that believed in Christ. We will see it. And it says that when we enter the gates of heaven, that they will be there to greet us and hug us. And there will be great rejoicing and a great reunion. Amen. Can you imagine that? It's going to be beautiful. It makes me want to be there right now. You know? One day we will be in heaven. And we will see that everything that the Bible said is true. We were watching a movie, me and my wife, yesterday. I went to a garage sale and they had some movies. And I, we always buy movies and stuff. And I bought this movie. And I really didn't know what it was about. I just took it. And, and, and I liked it. Because I, I like action movies. And so, uh, <laughs> I do. You do too, huh? That's right, Austin. My brother said, praise the Lord, man. I like to explain Yeah. That's awesome. And so we, we put it on, and guess what it was about? Tell I'm not even going to tell. Tell them what it's about, Melissa. The movie that we put on. It's about a girl. She died um, in a, a, an accident, and she actually uh, literally went to hell and saw um, the torment of, of all those people in hell, and then she came back to life. And she became a um, preacher of the gospel. Wow. She went back and wrote a letter and told all her friends what she had seen. She says, I never thought that this would be possible, but Jesus Christ is real. And you need to accept him now that you're here in this life. 
so that you don't have to go to that place. Believe me, we want to go where Jesus is. Amen. So that's why He came. That's what Easter is all about. The passion of Christ. The suffering of Christ. Christ suffering on the cross so that we don't have to go through that. He paid the price for us with His precious blood. Amen. Because remember, to be able to seal a covenant or a pact in the Old Testament, there need to be shedding of blood. Uh, because without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. Right. So that's why in the Old Testament, they had to cut a, a, a calf, or they had to sacrifice animals, and, and sprinkle the blood, and sprinkle the blood on the mercy seat of Christ. And But today, that doesn't have to be done, because Jesus Christ paid the ultimate price. And so Easter is about Christ dying for us so that we don't have to go to hell so we can go to heaven. It's very easy. We don't have to go through a whole bunch of theological statements. That's what it's about. Accepting Christ, living a right life for Him. And allowing Him to direct us in everything that we do. Now is it going to be easy? Christian is the hardest thing that you can do in your life. Being a Christian is not easy. Because sometimes the flesh will get in the way. And we want to, you know, we, 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 we want to get angry, you know, we're going to get mad. And we see it all the time, you know. But Christ has given us His Word so that we can live by it. So that we can understand what He wants for us, you know. The humble king is not a man of chariots and war horses. Swords and bows. That's Zechariah 9 and 10. But one who will bring peace to all nations. His gift is a gift of life, not of conquest. So Jesus didn't come to uh, destroy the Roman army with, you know, with, with a breath of fire and stuff like that. Now, he came in a humble major the first time. And he died in a humble way, in a cross. But when He comes back again, the Bible says that He's coming in splendor and power. Yes. And that every eye in this world will see Him descending from the clouds. Mm. And so we want to make sure <laughs> that we are right with God. Because once He comes, there's not going to be any time to pray. There's not going to be any time to go to church. There's not going to be any time to get right with God. And that's why a lot of people make the mistake and try to give, well, I'll have time for that. You never know the day or the hour. Tomorrow can be your last day. So we always need to make sure that we're right with God. And night, when everything is said and done, when you're going to sleep, Lord, if I, if I have any faults today, if I did something wrong, Lord, please forgive me. And help me. Because, you know, it, it's important. And Easter is about, it's about remembering 